It's going to be an exciting episode because we're comparing two software giants, Samsung's One UI 4.0 versus Google's Android 12 update, both of which are loved by the Android community, and you may be shocked by the results. Now I know One UI 4 is based on Android 12, but there's still a lot of awesome features that Samsung left out within their software, and a lot of new features that they did introduce themselves. So that's what we're going to be focusing on, showing the differences and explaining which software did it better if they had similar features. In the end, you should get a better idea as to what software update you prefer more. So sit back, grab your popcorn, and maybe even drop a thumbs up to show your support for the channel. Also, it's still mind boggling that so many people that watch my videos aren't subscribed yet, because quality content like this is a weekly thing on the channel and you're not gonna wanna miss out. Now let's start with every Android 12 feature that One UI 4 doesn't have. The most obvious is the richer and more profound design language that Google is using called Material U. I mean, seriously, Google went all out. The entire interface feels a lot more alive, colorful, and fun. As most of you already know, almost every element is bigger, rounder, and colorful, and practically every screen looks completely different than what was used in Android 11. This includes the lock screen, volume panel, notification shade, quick settings, system settings, and even some Google apps. On the other hand, Samsung didn't really change One UI's design. Aside from a few minuscule changes like making a few elements have rounded corners, tweaking some of their apps, or supporting wallpaper-based themes, a lot of it is still uses the same design language that we've seen since 2018. And to be honest, a lot of people are totally fine with that. Now here's the thing, you either hate Google's new material you design, or you love it. There's no in-between. Another exclusive Android 12 feature is that within the Recents menu, whenever you scroll over the Chrome browser or the YouTube app, an icon will pop up to let you quickly copy and share the link. What's even cooler is that you can long press it and drag it to one of your contacts at the bottom to share it. Plus, if there's a picture, you can save it or share it the same way you can with a link, all while being within the Recents page. Unfortunately, One UI 4 lacks this feature. Another feature that One UI lacks is face-based auto-rotate, which is honestly a really neat feature. Whenever I'm lying on my side, my pixel won't change the landscape, even with auto-rotate enabled. And that's because it uses the front-facing camera to follow the rotation of my face. It's a great idea, but as of now, it's still pretty gimmicky since the phone will sometimes change the landscape anyways, even when I don't want it to. What is more reliable is Android 12's unlocking animation. You get this sweet ripple effect that expands from the lock key whenever you turn on the display, or it gets sucked back into the power button whenever you lock your phone. It's extremely beautiful and satisfying. The fun doesn't stop there though. The ripple also appears when I unlock the phone with the fingerprint sensor, charge the phone from the port, or even charge it wirelessly. Hell, it even animates when I charge the phone as it's powered off. One UI 4 unfortunately just turns on the screen abruptly and you do get a neat charging effect when you plug in a cable, but it's not as satisfying as what Google provides. Believe it or not, as useful as it is, Google's Android 12 software even comes packed with an extra gesture that surprisingly One UI doesn't have. I'm talking about Quick Tap. This lets you double tap the back of the phone to do a task or launch an app. I use it all the time to launch Snapchat. Android 12 also introduced a new one-handed mode that drops half of the screen whenever you swipe down on the nav bar. It's a copy from iOS, but Samsung has had this feature for the longest, and it's way better than what Google offers. Not only does it let you turn this entire screen into a miniature version, but you can also adjust the size and swap the screen to either edge. Within the quick settings, aside from the obvious design change of bigger and rectangular tiles, Android 12 includes two extra ones that Samsung doesn't support a Google Pay tile to bring up your cards a lot quicker, and an alarm tile to see your next set alarm. The alarm tile is just there though because Google decided to remove it from the top of the expanded notification page. On top of that, when you tap on the internet tile, a unified menu will slide in to let you toggle Wi-Fi and mobile data. It's an extra step that it really isn't needed though if you're just trying to turn off your Wi-Fi. Samsung did include this menu and still lets you toggle the Wi-Fi with a single tap. Android 12 on the Pixel lets you swipe away screenshot previews so that it doesn't get in the way of your content. Honestly, I can't tell you how useful this is. Samsung, on the other hand, doesn't let you dismiss the preview, even though it only lasts a few seconds. Instead, you can either wait it out or just disable the entire toolbar altogether within the settings. Also within the settings, Google's Android 12 includes a few extra safety and emergency options. Things like car crash detection, when you're inputting your medical information, Google provides extra options for inputting basic information. And you have Emergency SOS, which lets you call 911 if you quickly press the power button five times. Unfortunately, One UI 4 doesn't support most of those options. 
There are a few extra widgets that One UI 4 doesn't have. The first one is called Conversations, which lets you place your latest chats from some of your contacts on the home screen. It supports a lot of the popular messengers like Facebook, WhatsApp, Slack, Google Messages, etc. And the second widget is only exclusive to the Pixels. It's a giant weather pill and weather card that tells you the current forecast and brings up the Google Weather app if you tap on it. Don't get it twisted though, One UI 4 already includes a weather widget of its own, and it looks even better now. Plus they updated some of their own Samsung widgets, including the calendar, clock, Samsung notes, and more. Samsung also carries a lot of the new Android 12 privacy features like letting you know when your camera or microphone is being used, but believe it or not, it's not 100% effective at detecting those camera usages. On a rare few occasions, it'll miss it. But there is an app though called Anti-Stalker that will catch every camera and microphone usages even if Android 12 doesn't. It's called Anti-Stalker and it even works on devices running Android 11 or lower. Now Anti-Stalker did sponsor this video, but it works perfectly by silently running in the background and notifying you when other apps are using the microphone or camera and for how long they've been using those permissions. Detection history can even be found within the monitoring console of the app. Perfect for detecting if other apps are listening to your conversations or recording you without you knowing. Plus, if you don't want to monitor an app, you can just whitelist it. Anti-Soccer also has a few extra helpful security features if you get the pro version. Things like data monitoring to let you know how much data your apps have been sending to the internet versus how much you've actually been using the app. Anti-theft alarm to play a loud alarm when someone tries to move your phone or remove it from the charger. Perfect for public places like the airport charging stations. And you can pin a notification to let you quickly block your microphone or just mute the microphone from within the app. It automatically unmutes when you're in a call. Overall, it's a spectacular app that works really well and the 6,000 reviews on the Play Store speak for themselves. The team is continuously improving the app with the goal of preventing data from leaving your device and detecting spyware in real time with the help of AI. So if you want to improve your device's privacy, use the link in the description. You can also redeem a code to let you enjoy 30 days of free pro features for the three month subscription plan. It's a spectacular offer that you won't find anywhere else, but seriously guys, don't wait too long because there's only a thousand codes available and those codes can get used up insanely quickly. Anyways, we talked about all the Android 12 features that One UI 4 doesn't have. I'm sure most of you are even surprised at how many there are since One UI is supposed to be the feature packed software king. But now, let's flip the switch and discuss every One UI 4.0 feature that Android 12 on the Pixels doesn't have. And just an FYI, I'm only comparing the new features that Samsung recently implemented, not the older ones, because as we know, One UI just sweeps most of the competition in terms of functionality. So within One UI 4.0, you're now able to customize the always on display even further. Before you are already able to customize the clock, add GIFs, and change the colors, but now you can take it a step further by adding animated stickers. This includes your AR emoji, Bitmoji from Snapchat, stickers from the Galaxy Theme Store, or even use a custom one from your gallery. Android 12 on the Pixel doesn't allow for any customization for the always on display. You just get your clock, weather, dates, and notifications, and that's that. Pretty boring. One UI 4 also lets you customize the background of any incoming calls by having your AR emoji dance in the background. I thought that was pretty cool and fun, and there are multiple presets to choose from within the AR Zone app. The same goes for your lock screen. Obviously, stock Android doesn't have this. The sharing hub on One UI 4 is now a lot more customizable. It looks just like the sharing menu found within Chrome, but it takes it a step further by allowing you to reorder the apps on the menu, and you can choose which app should appear on the menu first before expanding it. Oppositely, stock Android 12 does let you pin apps to the top of the menu, but it still looks cluttered and unorganized since it just brings up a giant list of random apps. Both interfaces have a digital well-being section within the system settings, but One UI 4 has an extra option called Driving Monitor, and what it does is it keeps track of how long you drive on a daily and weekly basis and what apps you use the most while you're on the road. To most, it may not be a huge deal, but to some, it can bring a bit of realization to how often you use your phone while you're behind the wheel. Don't text and drive, people. Here's a cool exclusive that just got introduced in One UI 4, video collages. Yup, within the Samsung Gallery app, you can select a mixture of up to six images or videos and bring all of your memories together in one single post. It's perfect for Instagram or Snapchat, plus you can customize the hell out of it. 
Unlike Google, Samsung also updated the design of their weather app and it looks way more beautiful and modern than what Google provides. It's also a lot more straightforward to use since everything is in one page. For those who use the Samsung keyboard, for whatever reason, Samsung allows you to combine two emojis to create a shareable GIF. I personally don't know how I'm going to use this in a conversation though, but you guys may figure something out. If you happen to use some of the features found within the accessibility section more often than most, Samsung now made it a lot easier to toggle some of those features from any page quickly. They did this with a new feature called Accessibility Button, and all it does is bring up a floating toolbar with any of your most used features. So for example, I can use this menu to quickly enable magnification to zoom into a picture, mute all sounds quickly, enable high contrast fonts, and more. It's a brilliant idea and something that Stock Andrews should consider adding in the future. Finally, One UI 4 now supports virtual memory and all it does is use four gigabytes from your internal storage to increase the RAM amount. So now I theoretically have an extra four gigabytes on top of my 12 gigabytes of RAM. How much of an impact this will make on performance though, it's not gonna be much though. Those are all the significant One UI 4 features that Stock Android 12 doesn't have. You were probably expecting more, but considering that One UI is already incredibly feature packed, I think Samsung did what they could for new exclusives and honestly, they didn't disappoint. Samsung also implemented a ton of the same changes that Google created within stock Android 12. Like I said before, One UI 4 copied over wallpaper-based themes so that various elements within your interface match the color palette of your wallpaper. This includes Samsung icons, your quick settings, and a few minor elements within Samsung and Google apps. They didn't go all out like Google did, but they may expand this dynamic theme in a future update. Like Google, Samsung also supports changing audio output within the lock screen whenever you're playing music, but they went above and beyond by also including extra controls such as adding the seek bar and allowing you to unlike a song if you're using something like Spotify. Stock Android 12 finally supports a gaming mode with options to automatically enable do not disturb mode, bring up an FPS counter, quickly start a screen recording, live stream on YouTube, and even optimize the game's performance if it's supported. Nevertheless, Samsung has had all these gaming features for years and even more with its game plugins app, so Google still has a long way to go if they're trying to appeal to the smartphone gaming market. On top of that, Google only just supported scrolling screenshots in their latest update. As most of you know, Samsung and many others had had this feature for years. And I mean years. What took you so long, Google? Fortunately though, Google did nail it on their first try. I actually prefer it over what Samsung provides since you get a more precise idea of how long you want the screenshot to be instead of just pressing the expand button multiple times. You know that cool new photo feature that Google calls Magic Eraser to let you seamlessly remove any object or person from a picture? Well, Samsung has something very similar called Object Eraser and it works pretty much the same way. Android 12 also created a few new tools within the accessibility section, things like a feature called Extra Dim to let you lower the brightness of your screen even further, and the magnification tool that now lets you enlarge small portions of your screen with a box. Both those features are also in One UI 4. Samsung also carries a lot of the new Android 12 privacy features like I said before, including the option to block the camera and microphone straight from your quick settings panel, the permission usage history to see what and when apps use specific permissions, the option to choose between an approximate location instead of a precise one, and privacy dots that appear in the top right corner of the screen to indicate when your camera and microphone are being used. All very much appreciated, and I'm delighted that Samsung didn't leave these new features out. Finally, I want to quickly run through the rest of the similar features that One UI 4 brought over from Android 12. For the home screen, Samsung included the same widget panel where all the widgets are immediately collapsed behind a drop-down menu. You can share your Wi-Fi with the nearby share feature, there's an extra option to only turn on the ambient display whenever you receive a notification, and you can resize videos that are in picture in picture mode a lot easier by just pinching in and out. All in all, both updates are incredible and I'm pleased with what each one provided, but honestly, I'm more in love with what Google gave us this year for their version of Android 12. I can't lie, their new design language just shows a lot more character and uniqueness. It turned a conventional old looking One UI into something more exciting, modern, and fun. Samsung on the other hand, took the safe route. And I know a lot of people were expecting more from Samsung this year since Google stepped up their game, but One UI 4 only brought about a few new features of its own and also made a few tiny design changes here and there. It's not a bad thing though. I know most people aren't huge fans of Google's material you design. After all, it gives the people an extra option to stay away from something that they don't like. Either way, let me know in the comments which OS update you prefer. 
personally, I prefer Google's Android 12 update. Thank you guys so much for sticking to the end. You guys are my true fans. And if you enjoyed this comparison, a quick thumbs up would really help this video get noticed by the YouTube algorithm. Also, get subscribed with the notification bell turned on while you're at it. I promise you won't regret it since I produce quality videos just like this every single week. Either way, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!